Out of all three lanes, in my opinion, the mid lane is the most interesting one. It has insanely high skill ceiling and likewise insanely rewarding gameplay once you get things right. In this resource, I'll further break down what exactly can a player expect in the mid lane, what does the mid lane expect from the player, and I'll do my best to catch up to speed any returning or role switching player. First, we'll begin with the basics. This will be intended for any player with little to none of the previous MOBA experience, so more advanced players might want to skip further. I'll leave the timestamps in the description. The new players, however, would still benefit from a completed tutorial and a bot game or two for the concepts talked about here to make a bit more sense. With that said, let's begin. What is the middle lane? As expected, the mid lane resides in the middle. It's a straight lane from your ancient to the enemy ancient, and quite often the lane through which either team will try to breach the higher ground to the base. Usually, only one player occupies the lane, but he can often be visited by other players for various objectives, and after the first 10 to 15 minutes, any player could take over and it would still make sense. However, mid lane's main attraction is exactly the fact that you're mostly on your own. That means that you will have to rely entirely on your knowledge to perform adequately, and a better player will often be able to single-handedly create enough of an advantage to put the entire team on a path to victory. Likewise, a player performing suboptimally only opens up the opponent to abuse this fact and lead their own team to success. That's why players who believe their skill and knowledge is higher than those of their teammates and wish to climb the rankings quickly will do so from the mid lane, often confirming their beliefs or getting a dose of reality. Either way, mid lane often rewards the better player the most. Next up, we got power runes. Often a high impact pickups spawning on either side of the river close to the mid lane, each 4 minutes throughout the game. Bottle, a permanent consumable item with recharges, which let you regenerate health and mana, can be refreshed with these rune pickups, and the bottled runes can be stored and activated at a later time. Many heroes commonly played in the middle lane will want to control the power runes, often calling for help from other players to help contest them. Another factor unique to the middle lane is the distance between the primary towers. While the side lanes have quite a lengthy creep travel distance, which can be further manipulated by including neutral jungle creatures in the lane creep's path, in the mid lane, the active playing field is very small, forcing players to employ their knowledge and experience to gain the upper hand through the creep positioning. And the last detail about the mid lane is that it allows a large array of heroes, with even larger array of playstyles, more so than the other lanes, to be a viable choice. Many heroes being played from the other two lanes can be successfully played from the mid lane, but usually not the other way. Want to be a flexible player, like a hero but he doesn't seem to fit anywhere in particular? Try mid lane. And this fact builds upon my previous points, that you will need to use yours and yours alone knowledge to beat the opponent. And because such a large amount of heroes rotate through the mid lane from patch to patch, you will have to build your own internal database on how each hero operates and how to beat it. A mid player's versatility is his greatest weapon. So now that you know what to expect from the mid lane, let's expand upon those concepts. This is where things will get a bit more in depth, so feel free to rewatch this part after you've gained more knowledge. As for the returning and role switching players, this is where you tune in too. Let's go. So how is mid lane play these days? Currently, the most popular and successful heroes are the ones who can make plays regardless of itemization or lane outcome. If you reach level 6 and can already threaten the mid tower or the side lanes, you're already creating space for your team and reducing enemies. Top tier heroes who accomplish these goals are the spirits, shadow friend, puck, visage, lycan, od and similar purpose heroes. Of course there are others that will do well as long as they're not hard countered by opposing mid, for example Zeus or Necro. Likewise, any hero that prefers to stay in the mid lane farming his bigger items with the surrounding camps will have a harder time winning. 
So if you like heroes like Meepo, Medusa, Alchemist, make sure your position 1 can fight early, because if both pose 1 and 2 will FK in the jungle, it is very easy for the enemy to take over the map, to the point of no recovery. As for the laning itself, not much has changed. Mid laner's priority is always blocking the first wave. Good block will give you an edge over the opponent or deepen the disadvantage from a failed block. The only exception to this rule is if you're facing a melee mid. Each match the mid lane can be made a kill lane or a farm lane. The status is dynamic and can switch at any moment, for example after a kill, death or a rune. A player focused on a kill lane will spend extra resources making sure the enemy mid either dies or it becomes too risky for him to approach the lane for a prolonged amount of time. Classic example of a kill lane is Queen of Pain vs most heroes. A player focused on a farm lane will instead shove out the creeps with spells and rotate to the camps, further increasing his farm at the cost of enemy mid laner having more breathing room. Broodmother comes to mind. A hero like Storm can always approach the lane from either perspective. He can force enemy Zeus out of the lane as early as level 6, or against someone like Dragon Knight, spend less gold on resources, do a couple of rotations, and re-emerge at minute 8 to 11 with an Orchid to cause havoc on his chosen lane. Couple of other points, preemptive regen is always better than not having regen when you actually need it. So make a habit of sending yourself selves, tangos and mangos, judging on how much damage can the enemy hero output. Lastly, whichever team secures the minute 4 power runes is likely to help their mid laner come out on top. Always ask at least one support to join you for the rune timer, and ideally both if your hero is natively weaker. From there on, reach level 6 and start making your moves. And that's about all the information you'll need as a new, returning or role switching player. I will leave some more relevant mid lane resources in the description. This concludes today's topic, thank you for watching, good luck!